we do not officially condone any illegal activity. Yeah, check on, check on the street art laws in your area before attempting to make any street art. I think maybe you should flash that in text yeah. in the beginning of the film. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Justin Hall, and I'm here with Lauren Gujic and Rachel Cassandra. These are two friends of mine who've just written a book, Sin Miedo, Art Without Fear, a story of Latin American female street artists. Inside this book, you'll find about 192 pages of interviews, color photographs of artwork, and portraits of women street artists who are working in Latin America. One of the women we interviewed, Perversa, she's not a single mom, but she's essentially doing most of the caretaking for her daughter on her own. And she talks about actually how her daughter was a huge influence. She wanted to make the city a more colorful, beautiful place for kids. So she found it was really important to go to spaces near playgrounds and put up big colorful creatures. And she says Bogota is like a really gray city. So she wants to just put splashes of color everywhere and make them really big. And now she's doing giant projects that take up the entire side of huge buildings. The reason why she could make her street art work with her family is because she figured out a way to monetize it. She started a company, War Design, with another street artist. And so they make money painting advertisements on the street. And you'll see these in Bogota all over. I think another really interesting woman to talk about is someone named Aries in Guatemala City. She is sort of the mama of the female street art scene there. Almost every woman we met in Guatemala City said that they began making street art because of her. And one of her motivations for making street art is to get more women included. She kind of like coerces women into making street art, so she has a partner to go out and put up stencils with. Yeah. She's a fourth. <laughs> yes. So solidarity is a theme that's in our book and many women talk about it. Aries is one of them and also Ladies Destroying in Nicaragua. So La Kid, who founded Ladies Destroying, did so in part so she would have other women to go out with. She and her crew members talk about really enjoying working with all women. They said the communication was more fluid, they had more fun, they were joking around, they felt safer when they were painting with all women. So Rachel and I met when we were working in an art collective in San Francisco together, and both of us wanted to make street art but never had anyone to go out with before, so it sort of seemed like a natural pairing. I wanted to put positive messages on the street. I was sort of sick of seeing advertisements with negative images of women. I just wanted to have my own voice on the street and I didn't want to ask permission to do it. I'm a very visually sensitive person and I find it really frustrating that our public visual space is sold mostly to advertisers. They're not sending positive messages of love most of the time. A lot of times they're provoking insecurity so that we'll buy something. So for me, street art feels like an important political act. I want ordinary people to be able to put their voice on the street and for public space not to just be controlled by advertisers. What if everybody has access to street art and now there's just dicks and peni everywhere on everything? For me, it feels worth it to have a few pictures of like scrawled dicks if you have some really beautiful murals that people spend a lot of time on. I'd rather have both. And that's sort of the democracy of street art. At first, when we started making it, we talked about our rules and our code of ethics. In San Francisco, if a piece of graffiti goes up on someone's personal property, it's the property owner's responsibility to cover it up or they get fined. And so we never thought that that was fair, that our art or our voice should impact someone negatively. So we said no personal property, no hospitals, no government buildings, but we really tried to work on sort of temporal walls. So construction sites, we really wanted to use spaces that could use a little something extra. I mean, yeah, because what you guys are talking about is illegal. This book has street artists who are working legally too, making murals. 
I feel it's really important to clarify that it's, it's not just about making illegal street art. However people are making art on the street is valuable. Maybe we should talk about the difference between graffiti and street art. Graffiti is letters. That's what you see when you walk down the street and you see these elaborate, intricate letters and you might not be able to read them. The painting of letters is graffiti. Street art is a broader umbrella term and it encompasses people who are doing graffiti but also people who are doing paste-ups, wheat paste, where they're creating images, possibly reproducing a lot of them and pasting them up on walls with a glue made called wheat paste made of flour and water. Graffiti culture specifically is incredibly macho and women are often excluded from the culture but also there's really intense like objectification of women. You know, a lot of graffiti artists will paint images of women where they're being objectified. And also it's like very, it's like a cool, like fun thing to like paint your tag on like a naked women, woman and she's like posing like that. When you look through, uh, say like graffiti books or graffiti zines or whatever, you'll see all of this culture reproduced. And so that, that's a really clear message to any women who are picking up these publications is like, your role as a woman is to be an object and to be um, maybe to be painted literally or maybe to be the subject of a graffiti piece, but definitely not to be holding the spray can yourself. Hola, soy la Miki. So there are few, fewer women making street art because of a lot of these barriers. And those barriers are what we're trying to help knock down with this book and say, oh yeah, there's tons of women making street art. They might not be as famous as Banksy or the other artist that most of the media focuses on, but they're making street art and it's really cool and here are their stories. The proceeds will be going back to the artists that we profiled in the book. In some of the places where we worked, you can fund an entire mural with $20. We're excited to fund some murals. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see what people do. Yeah. yeah. One of the questions that we asked every single artist that we met was, do you have any advice for other young people or young women hoping to make street art? and an overwhelmingly amount of women said, no tengo miedo or sin miedo, which is have no fear. And so while we recognize that there are many obstacles for women to overcome in the street art field, that they must persevere without fear to have their messages be seen on the street. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Oh my gosh, yeah. thank you guys for the hard work you did and the fun you had and the way you're sharing it because it's one thing to be inspired, but it's another thing to raise money and travel abroad and sleep in the streets and interview artists and then actually pull off making a book to share with the world. So it's good to hear your reflections on what you learned. People like you support The Justin Hall Show on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash Justin.